So this is a video I've been looking forward to doing for some time. This is my real everyday carry. So this is the gear I have with me every day and it consists of pocket carry and wearables and it's what I have with me when I'm home or close to home. And then there's the gear I carry in addition to this when I travel further from home, which is in fact most days. And for that, I use a sling bag. I should start by saying a great many of the items you're about to see have already been reviewed in detail on the channel. So I'll put a link to all those videos in the description down below, along with where you can buy any of the items featured. Now regular viewers won't be surprised to see this. This is the Victorinox Compact and it's been part of my daily carry for three years now. It's only two layers thick which I really like and it has my two most used tools and that is a knife which is a really practical length on this 91 millimeter Victorinox and also some great Victorinox scissors. And it's also legal to carry in the UK. It has plus scales, so it has a pen as well as tweezers and a toothpick. Although I've replaced my toothpick with this small but very effective ferro rod. Then we have this great combination tool here, which is a screwdriver and pry tool and also a bottle opener and can opener and also a wire stripper, which also happens to be a great striker tool for the ferro rod. On the back, we have a corkscrew, which is less needed these days, but it can do other things like undo a knot amongst various other hacks. And it does make a great carry solution for this eyeglass screwdriver and also this Helix Tinder, and that's to help with fire starting. And I've wrapped this Tinder in a little bit of tape just to stop it fraying. And you'll also notice that concealed under the corkscrew, we have this pin too. And then finally, we have the parcel hook tool. And this can be genuinely useful if you need to grab something which digs into your fingers. There's also an effective nail file on the back of the parcel hook. And that's something which is unique to the compact. And then on the keyring loop, I have this Keysmart Nano Pocket Clip, which stops the knife dropping to the bottom of my jeans pocket and makes it much easier to grab. And I find this better than even a dedicated pocket clip. Some of you will have noticed the black scales here when the compact only comes in red. And that's because you can buy original replacement scales in a variety of colors and change them over quite easily. And it's a great way to upgrade any 91 millimeter knife. And if you're in the UK, you can now get these directly from Amazon. Next, we have a flashlight. And this again is one I've carried in various iterations for some years now. And regular viewers will not be surprised to see it's the Rovivon A8. Small, but very powerful with a 650 lumen max output. And that's enough to light up something like a house. Useful every day for lighting up dark spaces or finding things in a cupboard or at the bottom of a bag. And of course it can get you home safely when you get caught out in the dark. This also has a useful red light built in, which can flash, think emergency bike lights or warning lights. We also have a white ambient light to light up a room, say in a power cut and a UV light to test for dodgy banknotes and let's say dodgy hotel bedding. It charges via USB-C and has four brightness levels, the lowest of which is moonlight mode, which can run for a full three days on a single charge. The key feature for me though is the size and weight of this light, which means you don't even know you're carrying it. And again, I use the KeySmart Nano Clip so it doesn't get lost in my pockets and I can grab it easily. And that actually leads me very nicely to this week's sponsor, which happens to be Rovivon. So a big thank you to them for supporting the channel. Now the A8 we've just looked at is part of a range of lights at this size, which have a transparent body. The other half though are all about the main light and they have a solid body. And what I have here is the A3 and the A3 Pro in two brand new finishes, which utilize a technology called micro arc oxidization, which is a process involving high voltages and electrolytes to create a hard ceramic layer on the surface of the metal, which is highly durable and corrosion resistant and which looks and feels really nice. The A3 here is in white and the A3 Pro here is a marble gray. And if you were wondering what the difference apart from the color was, the Pro here uses high hardness aluminum and has a more focused spotlight for increased range. 
using a reflector rather than a lens we see in the standard model. And to accommodate that, you'll notice the Pro is ever so slightly longer. The Pro also has a couple of tritium slots at the rear if you wanted to fit some tubes. These weigh just 19 and 20 grams, which is about 0.7 of an ounce, so super light. And although you lose the in-body lights we've seen with the A8, you do gain a strobe function. And I have to say, a nicer looking light. Rovivon are also extending their new finish to some of their other ranges, and that includes another favourite of mine, the Angel Eyes series with this E3, which is now available in the new marble grey finish. Still only 35 grams, but with dual emitters, a 700 lumen maximum output, dual switch operation, and the best feature of all, we have dual fuel here with a lithium rechargeable battery, and then we have a backup AAA battery. And that's not all. As I film this, Rovivon are about to celebrate their upcoming sixth anniversary with a sale. And I'll include links to this and also the new lights in the description down below. So a big thank you to Rovivon and now back to the video. My phone is something I have with me all the time, like most of us, and I'm firmly in the iPhone camp and I have been since 2007. The phone case I use is from a company called Quadlock, which I've used for several years now. And I especially like their new mag Quadlock system we see here, which introduces strong magnets alongside the original twist system. Because apart from protecting the phone, I can also quickly attach it to my mountain bike. And I use the original twist lock for that. And I can also attach it to a wireless charger on my desk and one in the car using the new mag mount. It's a system that is fantastic quality and it works incredibly well. Then I have my wallet and currently I'm using the Bellroy card sleeve, which is big enough for what I need, but compact enough for front jeans carry. I have a credit card and a debit card front and back, and then a pull tab ejects the contents of a middle pocket, which includes some cash, a driving license, a backup credit card, and a piece of note paper for leaving a note or for taking notes. And I also have my emergency contact numbers in here too. Then we have this air card tracker, which works with Apple's Find My app, just like an Apple AirTag, but credit card sized. So that means I don't lose my wallet or leave it behind. Everyone has their own challenge when it comes to key carry. And for me, I need to carry one awkwardly big house key that looks a bit like this. This is not actually it. This is a bottle opener, but the size is about right. And also a big car key that looks like this or like this, because I need to swap between two cars depending on what I'm doing. And in the past, I've used these from Keysmart to swap the keys about, which are quick and convenient, but not as secure as I would like. And the solution I'm now using came from a company called Ant Design, and it's their Q1 quick release keyring. Small, light, and very secure, available in anodized aluminium or plain titanium. And to separate the two halves, just pull the middle collar like this, and to attach again, magnets pull the two halves into position and then just push the ends to lock. So whilst not as quick as the KeySmart option, it's a lot more secure and it's working really well for me so far. And then here I've got this, which is from a company called Elevation Lab. And this is a waterproof case concealing an Apple AirTag. And then we come to a couple of wearables. The first one being a watch. And when it comes to watches, I generally pick from two, depending on what I'm doing. This is a Rolex GMT Master II, and I've been wearing a Rolex GMT for around 25 years now. I love the look. The second time zone is great when traveling, and the reliability and quality is outstanding. It is, in effect, a hand-built machine on your wrist. And believe it or not, I've never lost money on a GMT. My other watch is this. This is a Luminox Navy Seal and this is for when the going gets tough and for me that is something like mountain biking. And I wanted something that could take some knocks and looks good and with an easy to read analog dial and also a date. And of course I really like the fact that on here we have 16 tritium tubes 
that will glow without requiring any power for the next 20 odd years so I can always see the time in the dark. I have one more new addition to my wearable EDC and it is this. This is the Ultra Human Air Ring and it's designed to monitor my metabolic health based on things like sleep, activity, heart rate variability, blood oxygen levels and so on. And I've only just started testing this so I'm going to report back in a future video in a few weeks time. Okay that's my pocket and wearable EDC but when I'm not close to home I need to carry a bit more and that's where the sling bag comes in and a sling bag I find is a great compromise when you need more than pocket space but when a backpack would be overkill. Now I've been using the 7 litre Bellroy Light Slim for some time and it is a great bag but earlier this year I switched to a 9 litre Venture Sling and this has a little more room and some added durability for a planned trip to Thailand and that worked out really well and this has now become my daily driver. This is a woven fabric made from recycled materials and is super tough as well as still being lightweight. The strap here has no mid buckle and that's not really needed but it does attach at either end with aluminium clips if you do need to release the strap which I find useful to say attach the bag to a chair in a cafe so it can't be easily swiped. The bag width compresses automatically with these straps here which I like and I absolutely love the double ended zip here which means I can open the bag from either end and it opens really wide. All the zips by the way are YKK and the external ones are all AquaGuard. In terms of organisation you have a zipped pocket at the front with two internal elasticated pockets and a key leash. Then you have the main area which is big and open which I really like and in here you have a zipped flat pocket at the back and on top of that you have four pockets of different sizes. Then we have a zipped stretchy pocket at the front here with a soft lining but just at the top third of the bag so the contents of this pocket don't clash with the stuff you have in the bottom of the bag. A great idea and perfect for say sunglasses or a phone. And then we have two stretchy pockets at either end of the main area. Okay I'm gonna load up the bag with what I normally carry day to day and then run through each item. Okay here is the sling bag with the contents in I'd normally take with me when I'm away from the house so let's have a look in the main compartment. This is a memo bottle and I take water with me when I'm on the go but I don't really need a litre for day to day use because it's heavy and bulky and I'm never that far away from a tap. So around 400ml is more than enough for me and a 400ml Nalgene bottle will fit in here no problem but the shape is bulky and it gets in the way of everything I put in here whereas the A6 memo bottle is 375ml and flat and that means it fits perfectly to one side of the bag and it doesn't get in the way of everything else a lot of which is also flat. Now this is not a cheap option but I don't mind paying a bit more for something that I use every day which reduces friction and makes me happy. Next we have this which is probably the only item I've not shown before and this is a thin merino wool beanie and I take this everywhere. Now as you might have guessed I shave my head so without hair my head gets cold really quickly and it's not just in the winter but when it gets a bit chilly often on an evening in which case this is a godsend. Now it has to be thin if you're going to carry it everywhere and that means it's really compact and it also has the added benefit that it can be worn under a helmet. Now this one is from a company called Arcturix and it weighs just 35 grams but there are lots of options out there to choose from. In the back zip pocket here which is where I would always keep a passport if I was traveling overseas I have my lovely Smythe Sun Panama notebook with its super thin paper and I still reach for this when coming up with ideas and to-do lists where I can easily add a quick sketch if needed. In a narrow pocket at the back here I have my Bastion bolt action pen which I've been using for several weeks now. Super clean look which looks quite heavy but actually in titanium weighs just 47 grams or 1.7 ounces. Great quality fidget friendly bolt action, easy to get a hold of Parker refill and a bulletproof pocket clip all of which add up to a great pen. Next to the pen slot there's another narrow pocket where I keep an air tag. 
not immediately obvious so hard to find if the bag is nicked but primarily it's for peace of mind if I leave the bag somewhere so I can go and find it. Also in one of the back pockets I keep a power bank something I'm reluctant to leave home without and this one is new for me and I particularly like it because it's from Quadlock and utilizes the Quadlock magnetic system and that means it sticks to the Quadlock case like a limpet and a combination of the strong magnets and the quad lock mount means it's held tightly in place and doesn't move around and sort of becomes one with your phone whilst your phone is being charged. It has a 5000 milliamp hour capacity so good for at least one full phone charge. It also has a USB-C socket on the bottom so you can charge other things as well and it has lights to show you the charging status and battery level. In one of the end stretchy pockets I keep this really nice Orbit hand sanitizer dispenser a carryover habit from the pandemic that still makes a lot of sense today when it comes to avoiding germs and viruses especially before handling food when out and about. In the other stretchy end pocket I have the bottle top bidet and micro towel. Now I've covered this in detail in my must have travel gear video which I'll link to at the end of this one so I won't go into the gory detail here. Suffice to say though if you have tummy trouble when away from home this could be worth its weight in gold. In the same pocket I also have my wireless earphones for listening to music, audiobooks, podcasts and the odd video. And these are Soundcore's Liberty 4 noise cancelling earbuds which I received a few months back as part of sponsored content on the channel. And I was surprised to hear literally just how good they are. And at a third of the price of my defunct AirPods Pro I'm still using them today. Then in a stretchy pocket at the top of the bag I keep my sunglasses and these uh, from a company called Dita based in California and they used to be my daily wear glasses a while back but when I needed a lens update I had them changed to photochromic for use as sunglasses and to ensure they don't get bent or crushed I found this aluminium case on Amazon after a lot of searching as I was on a mission to find something a bit more compact than the average glasses case. So when the sun comes out I can swap out these glasses which if you're interested are from another California based maker called Mr. Light and I can be confident they will be protected in this case too. Then we have the separate pocket on the front of the bag and I generally save the space in here in case I want to carry some items which I'd normally carry in my pocket. Things like these keys for example or perhaps a wallet or perhaps a mobile phone and it's particularly useful to carry them in here when wearing lighter shorts or trousers when pocket carry can become very uncomfortable and potentially pocket stretching. There is though one item in here that lives in this pocket and that is this Altoids tin and we're not talking fresh breath here this is my get me out of trouble essentials kit for when things go wrong and if you want to see the 20 plus problem solving items I've managed to pack into this tin then I have a dedicated video just for that which you will find right here and if you want to see the video I mentioned earlier featuring the B-Day bottle top then that video is right here. So that's it for this one. I hope that's been a useful source of ideas and inspiration. Thank you as always for watching and I hope you can join me in the next one.